Hello, everybody. My One of my son's best friends is getting married in September, and I wanted to make he and his bride a wedding card. So my first idea was to do either foil transfer or um, do a, a, use a pen, like a gold pen or a silver pen, and do like a floral design. But as I was going through the images, I came across this designer. Um, Lori Clark, and I found all these images here that just completely in love with. Um, now I found this one here, uh, the coloring pages. So let's click on that image set, and I found this, and I think I'm gonna do this. Um, actually, let's see what this is. Oh, that's a a card that's got um some words on it. So we're gonna go just to this basic one. And we're, we're going to size this so that it's an A2 size card. So that's going to be uh, 4.25 by 5.50. And now we're going to come here and do a shape creation of a square. And make this the same size. Uh, 4.25 by 5.50. And I want to size this one so that it's just a little bit smaller. So let's take off that 5 there and do a 4.2. And then we'll drop this one down to um, 5.25. And we'll bring it to the front. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting out a black layer and put it behind this one here. Um, I actually did re uh, size this incorrectly. I guess I didn't. So that one's 425, 5.15. Um, this one actually has to go down a little bit in the um, width of the card. Okay, so let's go ahead and just, I'm going to um, align this just for visual purposes. Okay, so we're done with that one. I'm going to click over here to the right margin and just make sure that that black square is going to be the correct size that's going to go on the base of the card. Um, it's not attached yet, which is good because that's exactly what I want to do. Um, I'm going to make it a layer card. So I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller. So let's go uh, 3.75 on this one. And I've got to unlock it by 5.0. That one's going to be just a little bit smaller. Great. And let's go ahead and create the, duplicate that square, that black square, and resize it for this one. I've got stuff all over my screen, don't I? Let's pull that over. So since this is um, 3.75, which it should have been, by five, I'm going to drop this down. Unlock it. Actually, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Um, 3.80 by um, 5.20. Let's see if I did that right. Set it to the front, clicking on the right click. And I need a little bit of an adjustment on this black. Let's just put that lock aspect on and just Go ahead and make that width just a little bit bigger. What is my height here? Let's bring this down too. All right. That looks like it's a little bit too high. Sorry, I keep putting my hand over my mouth. Um, I don't know why I do that when I think. Crazy, right? Okay, so I like that. Let's go ahead and highlight that and align it to the center. So we have this layer here. I'm, I think I might want that black piece a little bit bigger. I'm going to click on that and um, I'm going to lock it and make it a little bit bigger. Oh, much better. Okay. Go ahead and line that again. Again, just for visual purposes. Okay. Let's go ahead and duplicate that. I'm just going to make three layers. And this one we're going to bring down to um, 
3.5 by 4.75. Let's go ahead and put that one to sleep and this one to sleep. And this, so if you're new to this um, graphic design space, what I'm doing is I'm clicking on the image then I'm coming over here to the right part of the margin, the mar right margin, and you'll see that this uh, image is highlighted in a gray color. So you know that's the one that you're um, working with. All right, so let's go ahead and bring in another square. And unlock that. Just showing you different ways to do this. And move it like that. Let's put that to the front, right click front. It needs to be bigger. Again, it's not locked, so I can adjust it however I want it. And we'll bring it down a little bit. That looks pretty good, except the black one. Let's go back to that black shape. And we're just going to lock it and go one. See what that looks like. Oh, I'm going to do one more down. Oh, I like it up. <laughs> that looks like that's going to work. I'm going to align it and see if that looks like that's a good size. Yep, I'm happy with that. All right, Ooh, here comes a, another part that I'm deciding I wanted to do. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. I'm going to hide this one. I'm clicking on it and coming over to the right margin. I'm going to hide this one as well, coming over to the right margin. Then I'm going to create another square. And I'm going to keep this one at 2 by 2. I'm going to bring it over and center it. Looks good. And I'm going to slice it. And just pull that over, pull that over. I'm going to be using this here, but I'm going to make it a lot smaller. I think this is what I want to do. So that's two and a half. Let's bring in um, one of these and see if that's where I want it. Oh, yeah, that's exactly where I want it. I'm going to hide this. I'm not going to delete it. And I'm going to be using this black square. So let's hide this one again. Oops. And we're going to go ahead and create that black um, layer for underneath this. Unlock it. Actually, let's click on that and duplicate that. And we're going to set that one aside here for a minute. Uh, for right now, I'm going to be um, sizing the black piece that goes with it. Okay, let's right click, bring it to the front. Hey, if I'm going too fast on this tutorial, will you guys let me know? Um, but if you have any questions about what I did in the meantime, you can most certainly leave that in the comment section and I'll get back to you. I'm unlocking it. And I brought the width down just a little bit more. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring the height up a little bit more as well. A little bit more. Okay, let's align it, just see how that looks. And that looks great. Okay, I'm going to highlight that and just put it to sleep. And we're going to use this to write on. I'm going to make this black square white. And I'm going to come down to text, and I'm going to choose a, oops, uh, I, think, I think I will use the current images. And it's going to be writing. And let's make something really pretty, like a script type writing. Pen pals, ooh, that's pretty. Let's do that one. And show where my text box went. Oh, did they update something that I'm not aware of? Oh my gosh. Um, 
or maybe it's here and I don't see it. Oh, yep, there it is. Wow, that was strange. Um, I don't know why it went all the way down there. We'll use that one and delete all these. Well, let's bring that up to our regular screen. It's supposed to be up there more. I don't know if that's something that's doing out, but the, or if that's just a glitch. All right, I'm going to double click on that. And it's going to say Rap Sheet Actions. Let's go ahead and get that letter spacing so that it's closer. I'm not really happy with the way that spacing is right here. You see how these are overlapping? Let's go one more out. Okay, that, that'll work. All right, um, <clears throat> sorry about that. And then I want to do um, their names, which is Kate and Zach. So I'm using the pen pals. Um, almost thinking I don't want to put those together now that I look at it this way. Let's see how that looks. Just taking it apart. No, yeah, I don't like that. Okay, let's go ahead. Now you can also come up here to the right margin and ungroup it and just manually connect these. It takes a little bit longer, but if you want it to look the way you want it to look, that's what you got to do. I'm just going to show you how I do that. See, I'm just pulling it over, clicking on the image, reminding you that it's ungrouped. Um, the problem I have with this is I can never keep it in a straight line. That's why I like to use the letter spacing. I end up uh, moving one letter down further than it's supposed to be. But ping and ping, whoops. And we're just attaching it. In a minute here, I'm going to size it so that it's going to fit on that little square. Oops, see what I mean? Go down a little bit. I could use the grid line. That would be helpful. Looks like so far I'm doing okay. I'm not looking for perfectionism. All right, let's see how that looks. Do the S and P again here. Oh, that looks so much better. All right, let's go ahead and group this back. I'm highlighting it clicking on group. And then for this one, let's go ahead and use some line spacing to start with. See what that gets us. Oh, okay. We're almost there. All right. I like this. Now let's ungroup it and just do a little bit of tweaking. I want this end to go closer. And I'm okay with that and that. Let's highlight it again and group it again. All right, let's bring our little shape over here, our little two by two. And let's size this down to the width of, let's do 175. Bring that, oops, bring that over. That looks great. And we'll do this one the same. 0.75. Now, typically I would do, um, writing on this using a pen, but I think I'm going to try the print and cut this time. Let's go ahead and see if, well, let's take this off first and align this. If I try to align it with both of those, it's not going to work. And I did not want to do that. I take that back. I guess it does work. Okay, bring this back in. I have to say I'm not a pro at Cricut Design Space, but I have been able to help people out. So if you need help with something, we can work together and figure it out. All right, I like that. Okay, so I'm going to go over to my um, Maker 3, um, get this all printed out on my printer first, and then we'll put the card together. Um, and I'll be back. Okie dokie, let's put this card together. Um, now, I just wanted to point something out before we do this, though. Um, I did get the Maker 3 a couple of months ago, and I noticed that anytime I do print and cut, I have to calibrate it 
first. Not every time I do print and cut, but um, I do have to calibrate it more often than any of the other Cricut machines that I've used. This one here didn't cut exactly where it was supposed to. There's a tiny, not even eighth of an inch of space that the machine cut off of the image the way it should have. I'm going to just leave it. I don't want to waste any paper. And honestly, I don't think that my son's friend and his future wife are even going to notice it. But my suggestion is calibrate your machine. All right, let's put it all together now. We got this guy, this cut the back. My um, Tombow glue ran out. So I pulled out my quilling um, glue thing here. All right, I'm going to put that part that didn't cut properly down at the bottom. And make sure that that one goes on straight. I don't know if you guys have ever had a project that you're working on and you had to end up doing it many multiple times because for whatever reason it just wasn't working out. Oh, good morning! My neighbor's cat is here to visit. Um, but this was one of those projects. I kept trying to do it over and over again and finally it worked. And that's the video that you're watching right now. Let's set that aside. So um, if you didn't see the one video where my neighbor's cat jumped up in the middle of me recording, um, she may do that again. She's super sweet. Jericho! Now that I got on really crooked. So we're going to start that one over. So a Jericho story. My son gives her little treats with her, her um, owner's permission and Jericho decided to give my son a treat and she walked up to him a couple of days ago and handed him a dead hummingbird. She was quite proud of it. It was adorable. Um, obviously we took it away from her. She wasn't happy about it but she can't eat dead birds. We don't know if it's gonna make her sick so her owner just thought it was really funny. Okay I just got a little bit of glue on the top of that. Alright, so in the previous part of this video, I went ahead and did the um, print and cut with this. But when I went and did the print and cut, just this one was on one single page. I wish I would have kept it. I think I tossed it in the trash. It, that's just a waste of paper. So I went ahead and changed the print and cut from flat to unflatten and highlighted this all and changed it to pen. I also made it two by two, which was too big. So I reduced the size down to one and 1.75, 1 I believe it was. So now it actually fits in there. Now I chose a pink pen just to add some color to the card instead of it just being black and white. So I'm gonna first put Apparently this is my first day using glue. My goodness. Put that over there. I'm going to first put this on and then I'll put the back on. And this is the other piece that the print and cut um, didn't cut properly. You know, to be honest, I haven't even talked to customer service about that. I just know that calibration makes it work. Oops. All right, now we're going to put this on. Yeah, so this is one of those videos. I ran out of glue, print and cut didn't work, did the wrong size. Uh, I should have probably recorded it because it would have been comedic for you all. And that's going to go like that. All right, so here's the base. And I'm going to pop this up. Not this one. I'm going to put this one flat down. So in addition to my cards and scrapbooking and my painting that I love to do, I also am an animal lover. 
and I just recently adopted um, a Siberian hamster from the classroom, a teacher, because she was leaving for the summer, obviously. And, um, well, that's actually a couple months ago. And she didn't know what to do with it, so I took her. She's beautiful. So we have a hamster. Let's go ahead and pop this one up. I think it's going to be better if I go ahead and put this foam tape on all sides. So I am now the owner of 12 quail. Oh, what's the matter, honey? Um, a hamster, bearded dragon, a blue tongue skink, a gecko. Yeah, that's going to go right there. And the list goes on. Okay, this is something that I'm struggling with and I don't know why. It does not make sense. Okay, it looks like this black piece is just a little bit bigger than I wanted it to. Because I wanted the white part here to show a little bit too. So it looks like we're going to have to do... I'm telling you, this card has been like this the whole entire time. It's actually... I have to laugh now. Okay, so you can see the depth of it. But my intention was to make sure you could see that. That's just something my brain didn't connect when I was sizing everything, I guess. Go ahead and pop this one up. And there we go. Oh, and we have fish and hermit crabs. I knew there was more. All right, let's see how this one did. So we're looking at the same thing. All right, so we're gonna do the black on the black. Oh, I don't know, it still looks really cool. Not what I wanted it to look like, but it still looks really cool. Okay, this one's gonna have to go over just a little bit more. And if you're noticing, I'm not really pressing down until I'm ready to commit so that I don't end up having to rip it up and ripping the paper. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Oh, turning out a lot better than I thought it would. It was worth it to go through all that that I did. And one more, and we'll be done with the card. Now this is a little bit thicker of a card so I'm going to go ahead and take it down to my local post office or UPS or whatever and get their advice on what's the best way to put this in the envelope because it's going to be hard for them to run it through the machine. So it's always good to do that. Okay, then that's going to go like so and we are done. I'm going to pop this up here like this again. See if you guys can see that. It turned out so pretty except this is crooked. Okay, I got it now. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, if you guys want to see my mistakes and my faux pas as I'm videotaping, um, I usually try to do the videotape that best works because I know you guys are short on time. Sometimes you just don't want to sit and watch somebody making mistakes over and over again, but sometimes you can learn from them. So let me know in the comment section if you want to be a part of the faux pas as well. Thank you so much. Have a great day.